Good morning and welcome to St. John's Broad Creek. Welcome to our digital church. This morning we begin Holy Week. This is Palm Sunday, yet we are still beginning this service in silence. So I invite you to open your hearts and your minds to worship this morning and to sink into a little bit of silence. Blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. also with you. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, in your tender love for the human race, you sent your only Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, to take upon him our nature and to suffer death upon the cross, giving us the example of his great humility. Mercifully grant that we may walk in the way of his suffering and also share in his resurrection. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Oh 
reading from Isaiah chapter 50, beginning at the fourth verse. The Lord God has given me the tongue of a teacher, that I may know how to sustain the weary with a word. Morning by morning he wakens, wakens my ear to listen as those who are taught. The Lord God has opened my ear, and I was not rebellious. I did not turn backward. I gave my back to those who struck me, and my cheeks to those who pulled out the beard. I did not hide my face from insult and spitting. The Lord God helps me, therefore I have not been disgraced. Therefore I have set my face like flint, and I know that I shall not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near. Who will contend with me? Let us stand up together. Who are my adversaries? Let them confront me. It is the Lord God who helps me, who will declare me guilty. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our response is Psalm 31, beginning at the ninth verse. Please read responsively by whole verse. Have mercy on me, O Lord, for I am in trouble. My eye is consumed with sorrow and also my throat and my belly. For my life is wasted with grief and my years with sighing. My strength fails me because of affliction and my bones are consumed. I have become a reproach to all my enemies and even to my neighbors, a dismay to those of my acquaintance. When they see me in the street, they avoid me. I am forgotten like a dead man out of mind. I am useless as a broken pot. For I have heard the whispering of the crowd. Fear is all around. They put their heads together against me. They plot to take my life. But as for me, I have trusted in you, O Lord. I have said, you are my God. My times are in your hand. Rescue me from the hand of my enemies and from those who persecute me. Make your face to shine upon your servant and in your loving kindness, save me. A reading from Philippians chapter two, verses five through 11. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness and being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God has highly exalted him and gave him the, same, the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Passion of Our Lord Jesus Christ according to Saint Mark. It was two days before the Passover and the festival of unleavened bread. The chief priests and the scribes were looking for a way to arrest Jesus by stealth and kill him, for they said, Not during the festival, or there may be a riot among the people. While he was at Bethany in the house of Simon the leper, as he sat at the table, a woman came with an alabaster jar of very costly ointment of nard. And she broke open the jar and poured the ointment on his head. But some were there who said to one another in anger, Why was the ointment wasted in this way? For this ointment could have been sold for more than 300 denarii and the money given to the poor. And they scolded her. But Jesus said, Let her alone. Why do you trouble her? She has performed a good service for me. 
for you always have the poor with you and you can show kindness to them whenever you wish, but you will not always have me. She has done what she could. She has anointed my body beforehand for its burial. Truly, I tell you, wherever the good news is proclaimed in the whole world, what she has done will be told in remembrance of her. Then Judas Iscariot, who was one of the 12, went to the chief priest in order to betray him to them. When they heard it, they were greatly pleased and promised to give him money. So he began to look for an opportunity to betray him. On the first day of unleavened bread, when the Passover lamb is sacrificed, his disciples said to him, Where do you want us to go and make the preparations for you to eat the Passover? So he sent two of his disciples, saying to them, Go into the city, and a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him, and wherever he enters, say to the owner of the house, The teacher asks, where is my guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? He will show you a large room upstairs, furnished and ready. Make preparations for us there. So the disciples set out and went to the city and found everything as he had told them, and they prepared the Passover meal. When it was evening, he came with the twelve, and when they had taken their places, and were eating, Jesus said, Truly I tell you, one of you will betray me, one who is eating with me. They began to be distressed and to say to him, one after another, Surely not I. He said to them, It is one of the twelve, one who is dipping bread into the bowl with me. For the Son of Man goes as it is written of him, but woe to that one by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been better for that one not to have been born. While they were eating, he took a loaf of bread, and after blessing it, he broke it, gave it to them, and said, Take, this is my body. Then he took a cup, and after giving thanks, he gave it to them, and all of them drank from it. He said to them, This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many. Truly I tell you, I will never again drink of the fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. When they had sung the hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives, and Jesus said to them, You will all become deserters, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd, and the sheep will be scattered. But after I am raised up, I will go before you to Galilee. Peter said to him, Even, Even though, though all, all become, become I will not. Jesus said to him, Truly I tell you, this day, this very night, before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. But he said vehemently, Even though I must die with you, I will not deny you. And all of them said the same. They went to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, Sit here while I pray. He took with him Peter and James and John, and began to be distressed and agitated, and said to them, I am deeply grieved, even to death. Remain here and keep awake. And going a little farther, he threw himself on the ground and prayed that, if it were possible, the hour might pass from him. He said, Abba, 
Father, for you all things are possible. Remove this cup from me, yet not what I want, but what you want. He came and found them sleeping, and he said to Peter, Simon, are you asleep? Could you not keep awake one hour? Keep awake and pray that you may not come into the time of trial. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. And again, he went away and prayed, saying the same words. And once more he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were very heavy, and they did not know what to say to him. He came a third time and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? Enough. The hour has come. The Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Get up, let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. Immediately, while he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived. And with him there was a crowd with swords and clubs from the chief priests, the scribes, and the elders. Now the betrayer had given them a sign, saying, The one I will kiss is the man. Arrest him and lead him away under guard. So when he came, he went up to him at once and said, Rabbi, and kissed him. Then they laid hands on him and arrested him. But one of those who stood near drew his sword and struck the slave of the high priest, cutting off his ear. Then Jesus said to them, have you come out with swords and clubs to arrest me as though I were a bandit? Day after day, I was with you in the temple teaching and you did not arrest me, but let the scriptures be fulfilled. All of them deserted him and fled. A certain young man was following him, wearing nothing but a linen cloth. They caught hold of him, but he left the linen cloth and ran off naked. They took Jesus to the high priest, and all the chief priests, the elders, and the scribes were assembled. Peter had followed him at a distance, right into the courtyard of the high priest, and he was sitting with the guards, warming himself at the fire. Now the chief priest and the whole council were looking for testimony against Jesus to put him to death, but they found none. For many gave false testimony against him, and their testimony did not agree. Some stood up and gave false testimony against him, saying, Some stood up and gave false testimony against him, saying, We heard him say, I will destroy this temple that, it, that is made with hands, and in three days I will build another not made with hands. But even on this point, their testimony did not agree. Then the high priest stood up before them and asked Jesus, Have you no answer? What is it that they testify against you? But he was silent and did not answer. Again, the high priest asked him, Are you the Messiah, the son of the blessed one? Jesus said, I am, and you will see the son of man seated at the right hand of the power and coming with the clouds of heaven. And the high priest tore his clothes and said, Why do, you, do we still need witnesses? You have heard his blasphemy. What is your decision? All of them condemned him as deserving death. Some began to spit on him 
to blindfold him and to strike him, saying to him, Prophesy. The guards also took him over and beat him. While Peter was below in the courtyard, one of the servant girls of the high priest came by. When she saw Peter warming himself, she stared at him and said, You also were with Jesus, the man from Nazareth. But he denied it, saying, I do not know or understand what you are talking about. And he went out into the forecourt. Then the cock crowed. And the servant girl, on seeing him, began again to say to the bystanders, This man is one of them. But again, he denied it. Then after a little while, the bystanders again said to Peter, Certainly you are one of them, for you are a Galilean. But he began to curse. He swore an oath. I do not know this man you are talking about. At that moment, the cock crowed for the second time. Then Peter remembered that Jesus had said to him, Before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. And he broke down and wept. As soon as, as soon as it was morning, the chief priest held a consultation with the elders and scribes and the whole council. They bound Jesus, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate. Pilate asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? He answered him, You say so. Then the chief priest accused him of many things. Pilate asked him again. Have you no answer? See how many charges they bring against you. But Jesus made no further reply, so that Pilate was amazed. Now at the festival, he used to release a prisoner for them, anyone for whom they asked. Now a man called Barabbas was in prison with the rebels who had committed murder during the insurrection. So the crowd came and began to ask Pilate to do for them according to his custom. Then he answered them, Do you want, to, uh, want me to release for you the king of the Jews? For he realized that it was out of jealousy that the chief priest had handed him over. But the chief priest stirred up the crowd to have him release Barabbas for them instead. Pilate spoke to them again. Then what do you wish me to do with the man you call the king of the Jews? They shouted back. Crucify, Crucify him. him. Pilate asked them. Why? What evil has he done? But they shouted all the more. Crucify, Crucify him. him. So Pilate, wishing to satisfy the crowd, released Barabbas for them. And after, after flogging Jesus, he handed him over to be crucified. Then the soldiers led him into the courtyard of the palace, that is, the governor's headquarters. And they called together the whole cohort, and they clothed him in a purple cloak. And after twisting some thorns into a crown, they put it on him, and they began saluting him. Hail, King of the Jews! They struck his head with a reed, spat upon him, and knelt down in homage to him. After mocking him, they stripped him of the purple cloak and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him out to crucify him. They compelled a passerby who was coming in from the country to carry his cross. It was Simon of Cyrene, the father of Alexander and Rufus. Then they brought Jesus to the place called Golgotha, which means the place of a skull. And they offered him wine mixed with myrrh, but he did not take it. And 
they crucified him and divided his clothes among them, casting lots to decide what each should take. It was nine o'clock in the morning when they crucified him. The inscription of the charge against him read, the king of the Jews. And with him, they crucified two bandits, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by derided him, shaking their heads and saying, Aha, you who would destroy the temple and build it back in three days, save yourself and from the cost. In the same way, the chief priest, along with the scribes, were also mocking him among themselves and saying, He, he saved, saved others, he, he cannot, cannot save, save himself. himself. Let, Let the Messiah, the, the King of Israel, Israel come down from the cross now, so that we may see and believe. Those who were crucified with him also taunted him. When it was noon, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. At three o'clock, Jesus cried out with a loud voice. Eloi, Eloi, lemma sabatian sitani, which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of the bystanders heard it, they said, Listen, Listen he's, he's calling, calling for Elijah. Elijah. And someone ran, filled a sponge with sour wine, put it on a stick, and gave it to him to drink, saying, Wait, let, let us see, see whether Elijah, Elijah will come to take, take him down. down. Then Jesus gave a loud cry, and breathed his last. And the curtain of the temple was torn in two, from top to bottom. Now, when the centurion, who stood facing him, saw that in this way he breathed his last, he said, Truly this man was God's son. There were also women looking on from a distance. Among them were Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James the Younger and of Joseph and Salome. These used to follow him and provided for him when he was in Galilee. And there were many other women who had come up with him to Jerusalem. When evening had come, and since it was the day of preparation, that was the day before the Sabbath, Joseph of Arimathea, a respected member of the council, who was also himself waiting expectantly for the kingdom of God, went boldly to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then Pilate wondered if he were already dead, and summoning the centurion, he asked him whether he had been dead for some time. When he learned from the centurion that he was dead, he granted the body to Joseph. Then Joseph bought a linen cloth and taking down the body, wrapped it in the linen cloth, and laid it in a tomb that had been hewn out of the rock. He then rolled a stone against the door of the tomb. Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of Joseph, saw where the body was laid. Good morning, young friends. I hope that someone in your family has gone to pick up a Holy Week bag for you. If they did, you had your coloring palm to wave or a palm like the one that Peter was waving at the beginning. You have one of those. In this bag, there are all kinds of fun things. There are some activities. There is our instructions for folding a palm cross. So if you pick up a palm, you can fold it into a palm cross using these instructions. Also, there is sort of a, a bingo, a Holy Week activity. Um, as you're spending out time or going for walks or something, you can uh, work on completing this bingo. Um, and this is for all kinds of children, young children and old children. Everybody can do that. 
We also have a Holy Week kind of nativity. It's like our nativity scene, like a crush, but it's for Holy Week and you can color it and cut it out um, and put your characters up and try and follow the stories of Holy Week through the week using your cutouts. So I hope that you will take some time to do that. Also, in your bag, there are some crayons in case you don't have those at your house. Now, I imagine if you're one of our young people, you have crayons at your house, but I'm not sure if Roxanne has crayons at her house. So she gets crayons in her bag so she can color her things too. And then in your bag is a little package that looks like this. And inside this package is some blessed wine and a, a wafer, a communion wafer. And these are blessed. And I need you to save these till Easter Sunday morning. And we'll all take Holy Communion together here in the digital church. So if you haven't been down to church to pick up your bag yet, you can do that. They're out. Uh, they'll be out at this afternoon at church and they'll be out on Monday and Tuesday as well so that somebody can come pick those up. Now, if your parents can't pick them up, tell them to give us a call or send us an email and we will do our level best to get a package out to you. Now we can't mail anything at this point because it won't get to you, but if we can get it to delivered to you, we will do it. Paul wrote his letter to the church in Philippi, crafting his words to convey hope. Paul's letter to the Philippians is really a kind of love letter. Philippians is the most unabashedly affectionate of Paul's letter. This is significant. Paul doesn't have a reputation for being affectionate. Just prior to where our reading picks up, Paul challenges his readers to remember why they came together as a community in the first place. He says, because there is encouragement in Christ and consolation from love, because there is sharing in the spirit and compassion and sympathy, make my joy complete. Come together as a community. This is your hope. You are filled with the same love, the love God had for Jesus. God has love for you too. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus. This is why you come to church. This is why you strive and struggle to be community, Paul said. Paul then goes on to quote a portion of what biblical scholars believe to be an ancient hymn. So that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth. I like to think of this hymn as the Philippians favorite song. What happens when you hear your favorite song? You sing along, or if you're not a singer, you might start moving to the music. Your favorite song lifts your spirits. It might even bring you hope. Paul reminded the Philippians of their favorite song because the hymn sang their core values, why they were a community in the first place. Followers of Christ can overcome any obstacle and endure any trouble because God's love is at work in us, enabling us to both will and to work towards God's plan for creation. At the beginning of Holy Week, three years ago, 800,000 people took to the streets for the March of Our Lives protest against gun violence. Pictures from that day have been populating the memories on my Facebook feed. Against that backdrop, the mass murders in Atlanta and Colorado are a slap in the face and would indicate that the protests did little if nothing to curb gun violence. So, I got to wondering why people take to the streets. As I recall my conversations from that day, some people were there because they were angry. Others were there because they were sad. Still others were afraid. And a few were there just because they were curious. 
Well, the people I spoke with had different reasons for coming. They all had one thing in common. They were all looking for hope. I imagine that those who took to the streets to greet Jesus as he entered Jerusalem were looking for hope. They hoped that Jesus would be the one that would rid their land of Roman occupation. They hoped that Jesus would change their world. People come to St. John's for hope. People look to us and to other communities of faith for hope. One thing became crystal clear for me over the past year. People are still searching for hope. The youth who organized the March for Our Lives were looking for the adults in their lives to step up and to advocate for their safety. People today are looking to us to create safe places for connection and hope in the midst of the global pandemic. Two things have happened recently that epitomize how St. John's offers hope, God's love and mercy and justice to the world around us. Last Sunday, Libby hosted two outdoor, socially distanced bell ringing clinics. Watching you try new things and celebrate each other's presence brought me hope. And the second thing, our Wednesday evening Lenten series was an intense conversation on race and racism. Over five weeks, over 20 of us gathered to consider how race has shaped our lives as individuals and as community. I believe all of us who engaged the conversation were transformed. We found hope. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus. Please join me as we celebrate our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him, all things were made for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven by the power of the Holy Spirit. He became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again. In accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for, we look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Relying on the promises of God, we pray boldly for the church, the world, and all in need. In Jesus, you came among us as a suffering servant. Give your church humility. Redeem your people from pride and certainty that we always know your will. Heal us and empower us to confess Christ crucified. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. In creation, life springs from death. Redeem your creation awaiting resurrection. Restore lost habitats and endangered species. Create new possibilities for areas affected by climate change. Grant relief from natural disasters and nurture new growth. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. 
Jesus was handed over to the powers of the world. In all nations, instruct the powerful that they would not exploit their power, but maintain justice. Sustain those serving in the military and guide those who command them that they serve against, uh, they serve those greatest in need. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. On the cross, Jesus joined all who felt forsaken. Abide with those who are condemned to death. Defend those who are falsely accused. Console and strengthen those who are mocked or bullied. Accompany all who suffer, especially Thomas, Sandra, Benji, Susan, Amy, Alana, the White family, for all who are anxious about when they will get their COVID-19 vaccine, and those who we remember now, either silently or aloud. Grant respite and renewal. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. You called followers to tend Jesus' body in death. Sustain hospice workers and funeral directors. Bless this congregation's ministries at times of death. Those who plan and lead funerals, those who prepare meals, all who offer support in grief. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. You inspired the centurion to confess Jesus as your son. We praise you for the faith you have given to people of all places and times. Give us also such faith to trust the promises of baptism and with them to look for the resurrection of the dead. We pray for the repose of the soul of Ken White, brother of Jan Kohout. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. We entrust ourselves in all our prayers to you, O faithful God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us all our sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. God's peace, welcome to worship today. We are delighted that you are with us. Again, please take the opportunity to pick up a Holy Week bag It'll add to your enjoyment of this week as we travel with Jesus through the last days of his life. Wednesday morning, we will have uh, Wednesday morning worship and Bible study at 930 in the morning. There will be no evening event on Wednesday. Thursday, we have our Monday Thursday service at 7 p.m. On Friday, we have Stations of the Cross at noon and Good Friday Liturgy at 7 p.m. And then Easter Sunday, we will have our festival service 
at 10 a.m. I hope that you will join us and I hope that you will invite friends to join you in worshiping with us as well. It's time for our closing prayer. Let us pray. We tell your story. We follow your footsteps. Lead us into Holy Week. We walk towards the city. We wait in the garden. Lead us onto holy ground. We journey towards death. We hope for resurrection. Lead us into holy joy. Amen. Life is short and we do not have too much time to gladden the hearts of those who travel with us. So be swift to love and make haste to be kind. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you now and remain with you always. Bless the Lord. Thanks be to God.